Ray, Grow Your Own Cloud. Merci d'accueillir sur scène Sirius Clark et Monica Seyfried. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Cyrus Clark from Grow Your Own Cloud. I'm Monica Seyfried. Very nice to see you. Nice to be here in Paris to present our project. We're actually based here at La Gaîté Lyrique. And Grow Your Own Cloud is an art project and startup that stores your data in nature's way. And what we mean by that, we'll soon discover. So right now, Grow Your Own Cloud is kind of in a transformation phase. We initiated the project as an art project. It's now a creative venture exploring a new way of storing data by storing data in the DNA of plants. And our vision is to transform data storage from something which is carbon creating, emitting a lot of CO2, to something which absorbs carbon by working with organisms such as plants. And our team is a multidisciplinary team of designers, artists, scientists, and researchers. And we're very much focused on the ethics of our work with other organisms. And our work has been recognized by major awards such as the UN, Ars Electronica, and the Interaction Awards. The project began actually with a question. What will it take for human beings to see themselves as part of nature once again? And that question is still very fundamental to the project. The project to us is still very much about a reconnection with nature, establishing a new way, a new symbiosis with other organisms and ecosystems, because we feel and felt as designers that human beings, particularly in cities like Paris, have become rather narrow-minded and a little bit human-centric. So what if we could expand our regard and start to reconnect with other organisms? And with that provocation and question in mind, we started looking into major issues facing the planet. And we were also very fascinated with data, because as we all know, data is the most important commodity that we have right now, especially when we talk about technology and modern society. But the inconvenient truth is that data storage is eating the planet. And with Grow Your Own Cloud, we actually coined the term data warming to draw a link between carbon emissions and data storage. So there's a little known fact that already today, data storage infrastructure consumes as much energy as around the UK or even Russia, which is around 2% of the world's energy supply. And that's going to rise exponentially over the coming decades. And of course, where there's energy, there's fossil fuels. And where there are fossil fuels, there are greenhouse gases. And data storage is already emitting as much CO2 as the aviation industry. And it's growing exponentially, whereas the aviation industry is not. So we wanted to find opportunities to explore another way of storing data. And through our research, we came across what we call the oldest storage device in the world, which, if you don't know already, is DNA. And DNA is a fantastic way of storing data. It's been around for billions of years, so it's very reliable. It's compatible with every organism, and it's also incredibly dense. It's something like a, a million times more dense than the hard drive you find in your computer or in a data center. So with all of these ideas in mind, we began exploring how we could store data in DNA and potentially with other organisms. Now, when we try to explain our project, one of the first things that comes up is, how do you do this? How do you store data in DNA? And I can't explain it, I don't have enough time fully, but in very short lines, you take a digital file, like a photo, and at the base level, your photo is nothing but zero and one. And all we have to do is translate the zeros and ones to the language of DNA, which is A, T, C, and G, which you may remember from your biology class. And from there, we go to the lab, we print this DNA sequence, which actually forms a liquid, and then we can sequence it to create multiple copies very, very quickly. And to decode the data from the liquid sample, we just do the reverse. So with this in mind, we've been able to successfully encode data in DNA. And over the years, because this, this project has been running since 2017, we've been able to actually work with other organisms and store data within them. And in particular, we've been focusing on working with plants, 
So storing data in vivo, as we call it, within the DNA of a plant. And I think it's worth saying that working with plants is, of course, important, but it's also very important to be ethical and safe. And the work we do does not harm the plant in any way. And to date, we've prototyped and tested a lot of proof of concepts, but notably two. The first was actually called the Data Flower Shop, which was a purely fictitious artistic exploration where, in many senses, we were exploring a future which doesn't exist yet, which we are trying to create. And that was the beginning of Grow Your Own Cloud. We created a flower shop in Copenhagen, which purported to be a data center where people could come and store data within the organisms of plants, or so they thought. And in the, in the flower shop, we had a lab, and we went through all of the scientific processes that, were, that we were using in the lab itself. Several years later, in 2019, 2020, we were able to do this for real for the first time. And that was through collaboration with a scientist called Jeff Nivala. And through our collaboration, we created the Data Garden, which is the first data center using plants. We work with plants to not only store the data, but also retrieve it in something like four to six hours per data type. And the flower shop you can see on our website, growyourown.cloud. And for the data garden, we have a short video, which you can now see. Our appetite for data is insatiable. In a digital world, watching videos, taking photos, or asking for directions means more data flowing into an invisible cloud. Yet this cloud is far less fluffy than we think. Cloud infrastructure is growing, occupying swathes of land and consuming huge amounts of electricity. Today, global data centers use as much energy as the entire UK. By 2030, this figure will rise to more than 20% of global energy. This has serious implications for the environment, with the data industry already emitting as much CO2 as aviation and set to grow exponentially. It seems we're heading towards a future of data warming. But imagine if the cloud could absorb CO2. What if servers could produce their own energy? What if data could be grown and cared for by communities? Grow Your Own Cloud stores data nature's way, in the DNA of organisms. We seek to create a new type of cloud, one that is organic rather than silicon and which emits oxygen rather than CO2. This involves working with DNA data science. This technology has the potential to store all of the world's data in just one kilogram of DNA. It works with organisms that create their own energy. It stores data in a format that never grows obsolete. The Data Garden is a new type of infrastructure for DNA data storage that promotes harmony between people, ecosystems and technology. The installation features plants encoded with data. The encoding process involves converting digital data such as text, JPEG and MP3s into a biological format using genetic modification to convert from binary to ACGT. In the data garden, data stored within the plant's DNA can be decoded using the latest genetic sequencing technologies. This process is triggered by introducing a liquid sample to a nanopore sequencer, which analyzes the genetic information to reveal hidden messages, sounds, and images to be experienced in the space. Working with nature to alleviate the threat of data warming, the Data Garden invites visitors to explore a world in which data storage is truly green through self-sufficient data ecosystems. This type of data center makes data an accessible public resource, open and shareable within communities. We began this work through speculative explorations, transforming local flower shops into decentralized data centers. This familiar yet uncanny environment became a community gathering space 
in which people could explore what data truly meant to them, discuss the harmful effects of the current data industry, and debate the ethics of new breakthroughs in biotechnology. From the speculative prototype, we moved to reality, working together with scientists from the University of Washington Molecular Information Systems Lab to develop the data garden. Collaborating with Jeff Navala, a principal investigator at MISL, allowed us to develop a process to translate digital data into plant DNA. The big breakthrough is a novel approach to decode this information using real-time genetic sequences. Through this collaboration between the arts and science, the data garden emerged as a fully functional end-to-end DNA-based data server, which allows for autonomous live decoding of data from plants. This represents a new format for data centers, proposes a new materiality around data, and offers new models for community-led data production and access through partnership between humans, technology, and plants. So even though our project started as an art exploration that was really looking at the ethics of, in particular, new technologies and new uh, spaces such as biotechnology, we are now proud to say that it's actually really becoming a reality. And in here you can see some of the technical and scientific network that we've managed to build throughout the project, as well as uh, the project was invited to speak at many different important conferences, such as United Nations Climate Action Summit or the World Economic Forum in Davos, uh, which really pushed us to be starting to think how can we bring that into uh, the reality. And also received quite a lot of good feedback. So right now, Grow Your Own Cloud is a startup, and I'm going to quickly introduce you to our founding team. So uh, my name is Monica Seyfried. I'm the creative lead. We're missing one slide, but we have strategy lead, uh, who, which is Cyrus, who is on my right-hand side. And of course, Jeff Nivala, the very key person in our team, who is the chief science officer. He's responsible for the entire encoding process, as well as pushing uh, on the science that can back this project further. It's a true honor to have someone like that in our project. Right now, we are proud to say that we've managed to build uh, different proof of concepts. Here uh, today, we know how to encode and decode data directly to and from organisms such as plants. And right now, we are sitting in Paris and we are focusing on really developing Grow Your Own Cloud as a service to be soon ready to launch it uh, for others to, to come in and, and really start using it. So what are we doing right now? Right now we're focusing closely on the R&D, running our research on all sorts of different things that are kind of important in order to stretch and, and really create such complex project like that, really digging deep into the ethics of uh, a particular technology like this. We're also focusing on different activations. So how can we already start implementing this technology uh, with different partners. So here, just to say, we're looking for collaborations and for people that could join us on this adventure and that would like to um, brainstorm and understand how uh, we can together work on this uh, concept further. And of course, uh, we are right now in the moment of fundraising. Uh, so soon we'll be uh, welcoming different people to join and start supporting us uh, from that perspective and that angle as well. And with that in mind, I would like to thank you and really warmly uh, invite you to join us and follow us on social media where you'll get 
all of the latest updates around the project, as well as visit our website for more information where you can also find contact to us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Cyrus. Thanks, Monica. Thanks, Paris. Thank you, Paris. <laughs> Thank you.